this map has a problem. It's a map of Alabama's seven congressional districts that are a result of gerrymandering. Meaning, these lines have been drawn in a way that favors one political party, in this case, Republicans. A lot of the time, gerrymandering is visually obvious, like when it produces weird-looking districts like this, this, this. In Alabama, there's one district that kind of looks like a dolphin. But the problem with this map is actually much harder to spot until you bring in another map. This one shows Alabama's black population. Now, mash these two maps together, and you'll see that one of the districts has most of the black population. On June 8th, in a decision that was called unexpected, a surprise, and a victory for voting rights advocates, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down this map for being illegal. So what exactly is so bad about this map? And why is this decision such a big deal? The Voting Rights Act of 1965 said a number of things, but it had two main pillars. One said that certain parts of the country had to get permission from the federal government before changing any of their voting laws. In 2013, that part of the law was struck down by the Supreme Court, and these places were now free to pass new voting restrictions and close hundreds of polling locations without any oversight, and a lot of them did. The vote in the Supreme Court was five to four, the five conservative justices over the four liberal justices. And since that time, the Supreme Court has moved farther to the right. There are now six conservative justices and three liberal justices. And that's not great news for the remaining pillar of the Voting Rights Act. Section 2, which broadly bans denying the right to vote on account of race. Over the years, Section 2 has been amended to include not just the right to vote, but the right to elect representatives. In response to that, many states have drawn districts in which a racial minority is more than 50% of the population, what are called majority-minority districts. That's what we're looking at here. The idea is that these districts can help minorities elect representatives of their choice, which should lead to better proportional representation from a state. And that's where this map starts to have a problem. In Alabama, there are six districts in which white people are the majority and one where black people are the majority. These are the congressional representatives from those seven total districts. One black district out of seven is about 14%. But 27% of Alabama's population is black, which is closer to two out of seven. And that's why a group of black voters sued Alabama. The question for the Supreme Court was, in part, whether additional majority-minority districts can be drawn. And the court decided... Yes. Here's the map of the state's black population again. Put the current districts back on and you can see two classic gerrymandering moves. One is that black voters in the western part of the state have been packed into one district. This part is actually not so sinister. To some degree, it's what enables the creation of a majority-minority district in the first place. But look at the group of black voters over here, and you can see that that group has been split between two districts, diluting their influence in both. That population has been cracked. And it wouldn't be hard to fix that. When this case was heard in a lower court, a mathematician presented multiple ways to draw lines that would create two compact majority black districts. The Supreme Court agreed. Their decision left the remaining pillar of the Voting Rights Act intact. And again by a vote of five to four, but this time with two of the conservative justices voting with the liberals. That part was the surprise. But. The reason this decision is such a big deal is because of what it might do outside of Alabama. When the population of our state is one-third African-American, and we know that it is, then simple math and simple fairness means that two of those districts need to be minority districts. That's, That's the governor of Louisiana acknowledging a very similar situation as Alabama. And now with the Supreme Court ruling, Louisiana could also be forced to draw a second majority black district. Georgia, Florida, and Texas have similar problems with their maps and are now being challenged in court. Even if just one district changes hands in each of these states, the consequences could actually be huge because this is where representatives from all those districts go, the US Congress. Which you can't even really tell from this, but right now it's under Republican control by a teeny margin, 10 votes out of 435. If one of those seats changes parties, that becomes a margin of eight. Another one, six, and so on. You don't need that many seats to switch for control of Congress to flip completely. So the implications for the 2024 election are huge. 
we do not really know why these two conservative justices chose to preserve the Voting Rights Act. Was Alabama's case just particularly weak? Is it a response to the heat the court's taken over some very conservative decisions? No matter the reason, the fact that this one state's map is now illegal is a big deal for the whole country. 